Hello there, you are here with me, fine jewelry designer Jill Maurer. I do talk a lot about jewelry on this channel. I also talk about luxury design, including luxury handbags and living well. Thank you for being here with me. This is a tag video today, a luxury bag tag video. This tag was created by Angelique Eva, and I was tagged by three lovely women, Yoda Style, Andre, and Tabby Violet. Thank you so much for tagging me. This is going to be a fun tag, at least for me. I hope you enjoy it as well. When Angelique created this tag, she said these can be bags that you love or once loved. It's not that you're necessarily going to get rid of them, but if for some reason you had to decrease your collection, these would be the first bags to go. This is very, very timely for me. If you have been following me, you know that I have moved from a very large house to a small condo. I have right-sized for my life right now. I am editing my life and I am going to be editing my large luxury handbag collection. It's something I've thought about doing for a while anyway. Now it is a necessity for me. I could fit all of my bags into this condo. I do have three bedrooms in this condo, but I don't want to bleed into other rooms. I want my entire collection of clothing and accessories to fit in my room. And I've gone from not even a closet. I've gone from a dressing room Room, a large dressing room to not even a walk-in closet. I have a reach-in closet now. I am going to be exploring having that thing tricked out so I can hold as much as possible, but no matter how you slice it, I will be cutting down my handbag collection. So let's get started with who will be on the chopping block. If you've been watching me for any length of time, this will come as no surprise to you. This is my Chanel Jumbo. I did used to have a double flap Chanel Jumbo, that I sold. I do not like the double flap at all. There are all kinds of reasons for that. I have a video on that. This is my single flap, and I do like the single flap better than the double flap. There's a lot about this bag that I really like. However, if I am going to trim down my collection and I have limited space, this won't be staying in my collection. I love the color of it, and I do love this bag. If I had more room, if I had the kind of room I had in my last home, I would keep this bag. I do carry it, but but it is not perfection for me. It's, it's good, but it's not perfection. Probably what I will do is get, if I can, I have a bag in mind, get a bag that is this color, that I like even better, that I will wear more, and that will replace this bag. Not only will it replace this bag, but it will help me edit my collection a lot. Because I'm definitely going to be thinking in terms of what is the smallest kind of collection I can get away with, even if that means selling a lot of bags to buy one bag and use that bag more, have it be a more versatile bag in my collection. So more on that later, we'll see how that goes. But this is the first one to go. My second bag, comes with an apology. I'm going to say right now, I am so sorry, Autumn Beckman. Autumn Beckman is the one who located this bag for me, and I do love this bag. This was my very first bag to be unboxed on YouTube, and it is the YSL, or Yves Saint Laurent Mombasa bag. She suggested this bag to me, and she was right, because if you know my jewelry designs, this bag, especially this horn, fits really well into the concept of my jewelry. It looks great when I'm wearing my jewelry. It is just a great bag. I got it on the Real Real. It is in great shape. I don't know that it was even carried by the time I bought it. And I have carried it once or twice. I don't carry this bag a lot. And the reason is I have two other bags that are very similar to it. In fact, the bag I'm carrying right now is similar. Let me grab that. This is my Shotzi Chen bag, and it is similar to the Mombasa bag in that it's a hobo. It's the same dark color. It has a similar handle, although this one is jade. And this bag just has so much sentimental value to me. I've talked about Shiatsi Chen. I discovered her in Asia. She only sells in Asia and Paris. There's one Western store and that's Paris. I will never get rid of this bag. I love this bag and there's a lot of sentimental value. So 
if I'm honing down my collection, don't have a lot of room, and I'm going to have a brown hobo, this is going to be it. There is one other bag that's similar. It's the Gucci Indie bag, and that one I would let go over this. I may keep it also because it has some sentimental value to me and also to my son. My son says that's one of the bags he remembers me carrying the most from his childhood, so I will likely hold on to that one too. Meaning, that this lovely piece will be on its way out. The third bag may come as a surprise to you, and I haven't 100% thought all the way through this, but I think I'm going to let this one go. And this is my Mulberry Bayswater. I do love this bag. I've used this bag quite a bit. It is a great work bag for me. I've done a video on this bag as well. I, I just have used it a lot. It's a great bag to carry to work. It holds my computer. It'll hold an extra pair of shoes. It holds everything I need. It is just a great work bag. There are a couple of things going on. One thing is it's a large bag and a large bag takes up a lot of space in a small closet. So this one will probably go. What's happening here is I have several large work bags. I have four that I can think of off the top of my head and there's one that if I'm going to pick one that I could carry all the time instead of this one I'm going to go with another mulberry base water that is a little bit different style and is in brown so that's that's what's happening is I'm just going to pick one bag if that bag doesn't quite work out for me in that way what I'm willing to do is sell all of my work bags and come up with one perfect work bag. I don't know what that would be right now. If you have any ideas, do let me know. But I don't carry a big bag as often as I used to because I used to carry it more than just to work. I don't do that anymore. And I definitely think I can get away with just one proper work bag that sort of acts as a briefcase. Along those same lines, this is another bag that will be going. This is a Valentino tote that I use as a work bag, and it's a great bag. I love it. When I am wearing black and brown, or if I'm wearing black and white and I want to add a touch of brown, or you know, the idea white and brown and I want a little bit of black, this is the perfect bag. But what I will say is it's a more specific bag because it is both black and brown. I have to be wearing just the right outfit to carry this bag. And when I am, it looks great. I just don't have the room for that kind of variety in my collection anymore. I just don't have the space for every once in a while bags. So this one is going to have to go. Last but not least, this is my Roger Vivier tote. Again, it's the same idea. This is a lighter bag. I like having it in my collection. I can carry it all year round. I can carry it in winter as well. This is a bag that I carry when I am wearing lighter clothing. It's a very nice look. It's a beautiful gray. I love it. And this is the classic, sort of the quintessential VVA rectangle. And VVA's claim to fame is that he invented the court shoe or the modern day court shoe. And his most iconic shoes have this type of buckle on the front of them. I do love it. I just don't have the room for so many bags. Well, there you have it. Those are the designer bags or luxury bags that I love but can live without. Now I get to tag a few people and I am pretty sure that these people have not been tagged. If you have been tagged, sorry about that, I didn't know. I'm tagging Be Fabulous With Me Irene, Oksana LV, Kat L, Sabrina Shikofti, Colorful Noir, Life of MC, and Cassie Thorpe. Ladies, I would love to see what bags in your collection you love, but could live without. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please do that right now. I would love to see you here again. Until then.